Hi, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today's topic is models of the atom. Objectives for today include explaining the Rutherford and Bohr models of the atom and explaining the quantum nature of electron energy levels. So let's begin by looking at the work of New Zealand physicist Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford performed a famous experiment known as Rutherford's gold foil experiment in which he shot alpha particles, also known as helium nuclei, at a very thin sheet of gold foil. Now most of those particles that he shot went through the gold foil undeflected, but a significant number of them were deflected by large amounts, and that led him to some very important conclusions. First, that atoms have a small, massive, positive nucleus at their center. Secondly, electrons must orbit the nucleus. And third, most of the atom is empty space. And there's a picture of Ernest Rutherford there on the right. But there were some problems with his model. The electrons tend to remain in orbit as opposed to deteriorating into the nucleus, which is what you would expect. As they're constantly turning in a circle, they're accelerating, they must be slowly losing energy, and you would expect them to go closer and closer in their orbits until they eventually become one with the nucleus. And that doesn't happen. Atoms appear to be fairly stable. Secondly, atoms emit and absorb electromagnetic radiation only at specific frequencies, and Rutherford's model really didn't account for this. So, not long after, Danish physicist Niels Bohr traveled to England to work on this project, and he came up with a refined model focusing only on hydrogen, the simplest of atoms. He said electrons can only exist at discrete energy levels. That means an electron can be at this level or at this level, but nowhere in between the two. He said each atom allows only a limited number of specific orbits, or electrons, per energy level. And electrons can change energy levels. If they absorb a photon of exactly the energy needed to reach a higher energy level, that electron can jump to a higher energy level. Or if it falls to a lower energy level, it gives off a photon exactly equal to the difference in energy levels. So, the energy of a photon can be calculated as its initial energy minus the final energy for the electron as it jumps energy levels. So the change in energy levels of an electron tells you the energy of the emitted or absorbed photon. Now this had quite a few important successes, and again there's a picture of Niels Bohr on the right. It predicted the frequency of photons emitted and absorbed by hydrogen very well. It explained some of the limitations of the Rutherford model, and it actually won Bohr the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922. So let's take a look at how we can apply this with a sample problem. Calculate the energy and wavelength of the emitted photon when an electron moves from an energy level of negative 1.51 eV to negative 13.6 eV, or electron volts. Well, the energy of the photon is equal to the initial electron energy level oops, minus the final electron energy level. In this case, that's going to be negative 1.51 eV minus negative 13.6 eV for a total of 12.09 electron volts. In order to calculate its wavelength, though, we really need to understand what its energy is in our standard units of energy, joules. So let's practice converting our 12.09 electron volts into joules. If I have electron volts and I want joules, I'll put joules in the denominator and electron volts in the denominator on the right-hand side. In the relationship between those, I know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. My electron volts make a ratio of 1, and when I multiply through, I come up with 1.93 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So 12.09 electron volts is 1.93 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now I can calculate the wavelength of the emitted photon using the equation energy of a photon is hc over lambda. Let's rearrange this to get the wavelength lambda, which is Planck's constant times the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the energy of the photon or 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second 
the speed of light or electromagnetic radiation in a vacuum, divided by the energy of our photon in standard units, joules, 1.93 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. When I plug that into my calculator, I come up with a wavelength of about 1.03 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, which is also 103 nanometers. We'll do more with this as we talk about energy level diagram, but this should get you started. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks. Make it a great day.